Welcome back to Fusion News. My name is Kyra Jorgensen and I work in communications at Helion Energy. Today is Wednesday, March 19th, and I'm here to share with you the latest and greatest that's taking shape in the Fusion space. Our stories today include, number one, the UK AEA and any Unite to build the world's largest fusion fuel facility. Number two, INL is leading the development of fusion blankets for energy production. Number three, FIA member General Fusion's LM26 achieves first plasma. Number four, Virginia governor says US must develop fusion or fall behind China on energy. And we'll have a couple fun bonus stories for you at the end, so let's get into it. Number one, the UK AEA and any Unite to build the world's largest fusion fuel facility. The heat tritium loop facility, which is set to be completed by 2028, will be located at the UK AEA's Cullen campus in Oxfordshire. Its focus will be on handling, processing, and recycling tritium, which is a form of fuel for fusion energy production. Fusion machines work by fusing hydrogen isotopes at extremely high temperatures to generate energy, and one approach uses deuterium and tritium. While deuterium is really abundant in seawater, tritium must be diligently managed. The heat facility will develop advanced systems for storing, transporting, and recovering tritium, which will be critical for future commercial fusion plants that use tritium as a fuel source. NE's involvement reflects increasing private sector investment in fusion. This collaboration with the UK AEA strengthens industrial expertise in fuel management, one of the key technical hurdles in making fusion viable at commercial scale. And as fusion moves closer to commercialization, having infrastructure like heat in place is essential for managing fuel cycles, handling, and storage at that scale. Efficient tritium handling will not only improve machine performance, but it also helps establish a supply chain for future power plants, getting us one step closer to fusion becoming a source of carbon-free baseload power. Number two, INL is leading the development of fusion blankets for energy production. Idaho National Laboratory is making progress on a crucial component for future fusion machines, the fusion blanket. This technology is essential for making fusion power plants viable by solving three major challenges, fuel production, energy conversion, and radiation shielding. Fusion energy works by fusing hydrogen isotopes, deuterium and tritium, and others, under extreme heat and pressure, which releases large amounts of energy in the process. While deuterium is abundant, tritium will need to be generated inside the machine as fusion is happening. The fusion blanket plays a key role in this process by containing lithium, which reacts the high energy neutrons that are produced in fusion to breed new tritium, keeping the fuel cycle self-sustaining. Beyond fuel production, the fusion blanket is also responsible for capturing energy from the fast-moving neutrons that are released during fusion. It absorbs their kinetic energy and converts it into heat, which can then be used to produce steam and drive turbines for electricity production. Additionally, the blanket acts itself as radiation shielding, which protects the machine's structural components and superconducting magnets from neutron damage, which can help extend the lifespan of the system. INL is leading the accelerated fusion blanket development through nuclear testing, or the BNT program, a national effort involving multiple labs, universities, and private companies to design and test these fusion blankets. This work is being done in collaboration with industry partners like General Atomics and FIA member Tokamak Energy, ensuring that research is aligned with the needs of commercial fusion power plants. General Atomics contributes advanced engineering and, com and computational modeling, while Tokamak Energy focuses on optimizing blanket designs for practical deployment. Developing a fully functional fusion blanket is a major step towards making fusion energy a commercial reality. By solving key challenges in fuel production, energy conversion, and machine longevity, this research is helping take fusion energy development from the lab to commercial launch. INL's work in this area will play a major role in determining how soon Fusion can produce clean baseload power. Number three, FIA member General Fusion's LM26 achieves first plasma. General Fusion, a Canadian company, has achieved a significant milestone with their Fusion demonstration machine, Lawson Machine 26, or LM26. They've successfully formed a magnetized plasma within the machine's target chamber, marking a crucial step toward generating zero carbon fusion energy for the grid in the next decade. 
LM26 is designed to achieve several key milestones, reaching temperatures of 10 million degrees Celsius, then 100 million degrees Celsius, and ultimately achieving scientific break-even, where the energy output is equal to the energy input. The machine was designed, assembled, and became operational within 16 months of the project launch, showcasing the company's rapid progress. This achievement builds on over 20 years of technological advancement. To date, General Fusion has built 24 plasma injectors, created over 200,000 plasmas, and generated fusion neutrons from plasma compressions, all contributing to de-risking LM26 and preparing them for this new chapter. The project has received substantial support from the Canadian government, including $69 million from the Strategic Innovation Fund since 2019, aiding in attracting private capital and contributing to the 440 million funds raised to date. This investment has significantly benefited the Canadian economy and its growth and its growing fusion energy ecosystem. This milestone brings General Fusion closer to its goal of delivering practical fusion power, aiming to provide clean fusion energy at commercial scale in the future. Four. Virginia Governor says U.S. must develop fusion or fall behind China on energy. Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin, alongside FIA member Commonwealth Fusion Systems, recently emphasized the urgency for the United States to accelerate its fusion energy development to maintain global energy leadership. Speaking at Sarah Week Energy Conference in Houston, he warned that without swift action, the U.S. risks falling behind China in this critical sector. Virginia is a significant player in the energy landscape, hosting about 70% of the world's internet traffic through its extensive data centers. This infrastructure demands substantial and reliable energy sources, making advancements in fusion energy technology particularly relevant for the state. Governor Youngkin's remarks underscore the strategic importance of fusion energy development, not only for meeting domestic energy needs, but also for ensuring that the U.S. remains competitive on the global stage. As fusion research progresses, Virginia's proactive stance exemplifies the broader national imperative to invest in and expedite the development of fusion energy projects, aiming to secure a sustainable and independent energy future. Now on to our bonus stories for the day. Neil deGrasse Tyson spoke with Dr. Fatima Ibrahimi from Princeton Plasma Physics Lab about fusion applications for energy and plasma propulsion alike. In the video, the pair discussed two main fusion methods, magnetic confinement, which traps plasma with strong magnets in a tokamak, and inertial confinement, which uses lasers to compress fuel. The conversation also covered plasma propulsion, which could revolutionize deep space travel. Plasma rockets using electromagnetic fields to expel ions at high speeds could cut lunar travel time down to weeks. They're just not powerful for terrestrial launches. And with steady progress in both fusion development and plasma propulsion, these technologies are moving closer than ever to becoming real-world solutions for clean energy and space exploration alike. And for our final bonus story today, uh, on March 11th, the Fusion Industry Association sent a letter to Congress pushing for the expansion of the Manufacturing Production 45X tax credit to include fusion energy. Right now, this tax credit helps renewable energy manufacturing, but fusion was left out of the policy when the policy was created. And with energy demand soaring coming from AI, data centers, and industrial growth, the FIA is saying, hey, let's fix this. So here's why this matters. Fusion is the future. It's safe, scalable, and it could power the world without emissions. China's moving fast too. They're pouring money into fusion and building a manufacturing ecosystem that could dominate this industry. If the U.S. doesn't act, it risks falling behind. It's all about jobs and security. Expanding the 45x tax credit to fusion would boost domestic manufacturing, create high quality jobs, and make sure that the U.S. stays energy independent. The FIA is calling on Congress to level the playing field. Other energy tech gets major incentives, so why not fusion? If the U.S. wants to lead in the global energy race, policies are needed that support fusion innovation in the country. So now we wait and we see if Congress listens. That's all for today's edition of Fusion News. If you've been liking our videos, don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our future videos. As always, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.